Thanks. So this is joint work with uh, Michael Jarrett and Brad Lackey um, uh, at NIST and the University of Maryland. So the uh, central topic of this talk is, in some sense, something we've uh, discussed before, which is stochasticity. And just as a reminder, the definition of that is a matrix is stochastic if all of its off-diagonal uh, elements are non-positive. And most research into adiabatic quantum computing, both uh, experimental and theoretical, uh, focuses on uh, stochastic Hamiltonians, though not all. <coughs> and by the peron frobenius theorem, we know that stochastic Hamiltonians have a ground state which can be expressed using all real positive amplitudes. And if you go to someone who does uh, say, a practitioner of uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulations, what they might tell you is that, oh, well, these, uh, we should have no problem simulating um, these Hamiltonians with our algorithms because there's no sign problem. And so if you're someone who's interested in using uh, adiabatic quantum computers to solve problems that you can't solve classically, then you should uh, take this um, statement very seriously. So is it true that these classical algorithms can always simulate what you do with these stochastic adiabatic computations? If so, then that detracts from the motivation, I would say, for building um, adiabatic hardware, at least stochastic hardware. Although, of course, I'm going to approach this from the point of view of asymptotic complexity, what's polynomial, what's uh, exponential, but of course, even uh, there are more fine-grained questions one could ask about uh, finite size instances. So let's look at uh, what these Monte Carlo algorithms for simulating these Hamiltonians are. The most widely used, as far as I understand, is path integral Monte Carlo. And earlier in this conference, there have been some nice uh, talks, such as by um, Elizabeth Crossan and Aram Harrow, about proving that under certain circumstances, path integral Monte Carlo can be proven to converge efficiently. And in practice, it's a, a pretty effective method. And um, on the other hand, there was a very interesting paper by Matt Hastings in 2013, which showed that even without the sign problem, there are certain instances that you can construct where you can show that the path integral Monte Carlo method will fail to converge in polynomial time, even though the um, stochastic adiabatic dynamics that it's trying to simulate is one that has a polynomial size eigenvalue gap. And the essence of his examples was to construct energy landscapes where the world lines uh, get tangled around some kind of topological obstacles. So in path integral Monte Carlo, you have a Markov chain, and the objects that are sort of hopping around according to this Markov chain are world lines, and you need them to equilibrate, and if they get tangled around certain kinds of things, you can show that they won't equilibrate. So that's, in some sense, good news for uh, adiabatic quantum computation. It shows that, at least in the worst case, this will fail to work. And there are some instances, there exist some instances, although rather contrived ones, where you can prove that, uh, that you can't do this classically by this method. <clears throat> so more generally, you can phrase this as kind of a fundamental um, complexity theory question. You can define a model of computation based on stochastic ground state adiabatic computation. And you can say, well, where does this lie between uh, classical and quantum computation? What is the set of problems that you could solve in polynomial time within this model? And so here are some definitions. P, polynomial time classical computing. BQP, universal quantum computer, includes factoring and all that. And I'll call this stock P, following uh, Scott Aronson's convention polynomial time stochastic adiabatic computing. And there's actually fairly good complexity theoretic evidence to think that, or at least some complexity theoretic evidence to think that stochastic uh, um, adiabatic quantum computation can't do universal quantum computation. If it could, then that would mean uh, that BQP is in the third level of the polynomial hierarchy, which is, I think, generally believed not to be the case. Um, so the two most plausible scenarios at this point are either stochastic polynomial time equals P, or it lies somewhere intermediate between P and BQP. 
classical and quantum. And so what Matt Hastings uh, paper shows is that proving that stochastic polynomial time is contained in, in classical polynomial time, that proof cannot be achieved by rigorizing path integral Monte Carlo and putting um, general purpose uh, runtime bounds on it. That's thwarted, that proof path is thwarted by topological obstructions. But there's other kinds of Monte Carlo that you can analyze and perhaps the uh, second most popular type of Monte Carlo are things that are sometimes called diffusion Monte Carlo. Uh, this actually goes by many different names. You could call it population Monte Carlo. Uh, there are, in the computer science literature, there are things called the uh, go with the winner's algorithms which are quite similar in flavor. But the essential idea here is, well, let's think about why it's hard to simulate um, quantum computations classically. And one of the reasons is that the quantum state vector of n qubits is two to the n dimensional. So if you have uh, maybe 100 qubits, then even Google can't store uh, that much data. <clears throat> but on the other hand, maybe that's OK, because probability distribution over n coins is also some two to the n dimensional vector. And so if your wave function is all positive, then it's proportional to a probability distribution. It's just normalized differently. And so what you could try to do is you could, instead of trying to store the wave vector on your computer's memory, you can just have your computer inhabit this probability distribution as a probability distribution. And so the key point to designing a diffusion Monte Carlo algorithm is to design some kind of stochastic process some Markov chain, perhaps, that converges uh, rapidly to the desired distribution, which is the ground state, proportional to the ground state wave function. So uh, what we decided to do is make the simplest, most stripped down variant of diffusion Monte Carlo that we could, not for the purpose of necessarily getting a really efficient practice uh, algorithm in practice, but something that we could analyze. And we call it substochastic Monte Carlo. I don't think it's very distinct from other things that people, have, that people typically do. But what it specifically is, is we um, take Schrodinger's equation and we switch to imaginary time. So now it's something that uh, will drive you into the uh, ground state of the Hamiltonian because all of the excited states will decay away exponentially. <clears throat> And if this Hamiltonian is stochastic, then you can interpret this as a diffusion equation, except that the total norm of this vector, which you, um, this, the sum of the entries in this vector, which you can interpret as uh, the sum of the probabilities, is something that's going to shrink as a function of time, unless the ground energy happens to be zero. And uh, so then, you can further interpret that as some kind of continuous time random walk. And what it means for this probability, total probability to shrink is that the, pro the walkers have some probability of dying at any given moment. And so then you have some population of walkers that you track. Um, once you discretize the time evolution defined by this uh, diffusion equation, you have some kind of a substochastic Markov chain. You have these little substochastic matrices, uh, just obtained by Taylor expanding the exponential at each little time step. And the walkers are at each time step either hopping to another uh, bit string, dying off, or uh, reproducing. So the point is that we can't really afford to have the population of the walkers exponentially decaying over the course of our um, time evolution. Otherwise, we'd have to start with exponentially many walkers at the beginning. If we run out of walkers, there's nothing left for the algorithm to do, and it just ends. So you need to come up with some way of replenishing the walkers. We did some ex computer experiments with several different methods, but they all are of the same general flavor, which is that we replenish the population by spawning new walkers on the sites of the survivors after each step. And if you choose the probabilities, by which the walkers either take a step, um, die off if they're on a high energy potential, or reproduce if they're on a low energy potential, you can uh, guarantee that the limiting distribution of this walk is proportional to the ground state wave function of your Hamiltonian. And <clears throat> if you examine what happens in an algorithm like this, you'll notice that there's something that looks 
very much like sort of a classical analog of tunneling. Because what can happen is that a walker dies off at a high potential and sort of respawns or gets re resurrected at the location of some randomly chosen other walker that's at a lower value of the, uh, of the objective function, of the potential energy. And this kind of mimics something that's very similar to quantum tunneling. Here's a numerical example we ran. It's everyone's favorite example, the ramp with the, the spike. Uh, and uh, you can see so that at the beginning, uh, the distribution is a binomial that's uh, centered around zero, at the Hemingway n over two. And then you turn up the potential, and this binomial ramps down. And at some point here, this is where we're hitting the spike, which is at Hemingway, I guess, uh, five or something. And there are some walkers that are left over underneath from earlier points, and walkers on this side can die and, and respawn on the other side, and you can tunnel across this barrier. That's the idea. So there's some question here about whether tunneling is truly, from a computational point of view, is truly a uniquely quantum uh, effect. More broadly, you could even say, if you think about stochastic adiabatic computation, what ingredients of quantumness do you have? Do you have entanglement? Yes, you have some entanglement there. Do you have superposition over an exponentially large state space? Yes. Do you have interference? Well, maybe not. I mean, the ground state is at all times something with all positive amplitudes. There's no manifest interference in this process. And there's kind of, a, I would say, a fundamental conceptual question at stake, which is, is interference a necessary ingredient for exponential quantum speedups? So uh, a tempting hypothesis, which you might uh, propose, is that if you have some stochastic Hamiltonian uh, with a polynomial gap, then you can always track the instantaneous ground state uh, prob probability distribution um, using a classical efficient algorithm. So we need a probability distribution which is proportional to the ground state, but just normalized. But it turns out that this hypothesis is false. We were able to construct counterexamples where um, uh, you can show that the diffusion Monte Carlo, our substochastic Monte Carlo, fails to converge this distribution. And the basic idea is that, well, you can tunnel if um, there's some walkers on the other side. And there's some probability for a walker to be on the other side, which is defined by the um, uh, wave function. And if the number of walkers is smaller than one over that probability, then probably there's none there, and you're just not going to tunnel. So in quantum mechanics of probability distributions proportional to psi squared, you can tunnel across more or less if that probability to be on the other side is not too small on the barrier. But you can tune the potential so that this other normalization of your uh, probability distribution, which comes from uh, the L1 norm, and which comes from the classical case, differs exponentially from the quantum case. Uh, in a exponentially big vectors, L1 and L2 normalization can be very different. And in that case, you can tune things so that the adiabatic quantum algorithm will succeed, but uh, Monte Carlo fails. And the way it works is it's just another variant of this uh, ramp in a spike case. We tune this ramp so that the psi squared down here is order one psi div divided by the sum of the psi, the L1 normalized version, the probability distribution that diffusion Monte Carlo and related algorithms sample from is exponentially small there. And then we lower a basin here. The quantum case will Pour, pour into this basin, and the classical algorithm will never find it because the probability of a walker ever landing there and notice, noticing that this potential energy basin is turning on is, is exponentially small. And we can prove that the gap is uh, polynomial in the um, quantum case. So that uh, hypothesis I made is false, and that's another piece uh, of good news for adiabatic quantum computation with stochastic Hamiltonians. So on the other hand, we can also take the practical point of view. Let's try running this uh, algorithm on some real problems. On some, we'll take some optimization problems, write down the standard adiabatic optimization algorithm for solving these, and simulate that adiabatic process using our substochastic Monte Carlo code. And so the problems we picked were SAT and MaxSAT, just because they're kind of standard benchmark problems. They're sort of like the uh, 
the uh, fruit fly or the lab rat, standard lab rat of biology is, is max at, uh, sat and max sat for uh, combinatorial optimization. And an uh, amusing fact is that every year there's a competition which is held for the fastest solvers of sat and max sat. So we have a lot of data to sort of benchmark against. We know what the state of the art is uh, on these benchmark processes. So we ran our code. <coughs> And it's not competitive with top SAT solvers. SAT, it turns out, in practice, is very different from MaxSAT because the fact that you know that there is a completely satisfying assignment allows you to do a lot of algebraic manipulations to your instance, uh, sort of eliminating possibilities, canceling out variables, and so on. On the other hand, for MaxSAT, our algorithm, which recall we could prove sometimes uh, fails to converge. It, can take exponential time. On the other hand, on this ensemble of instances, it worked much better than we expected. And so we really had to uh, savor that. It's, it's so rare in research that something works better than you expect, but that, that was the case. And in fact, our simulation of this quantum process, even forgetting that we care about quantum mechanics at all, we could just pretend that our original goal was to solve these optimization problems, it actually is very successful it, on, on certain classes of instances, the max three set random instances, it actually was superior to the winner of last year's contest. Um, so we entered it in this year's contest. I think we would have had a chance except the, for the fact that Helmut has also uh, entered uh, his uh, code into this contest. But we'll see in, in a week what happens. Here's some more data. Ours is the blue line. This is showing how long it takes to solve these instances. The only problem is there's a couple of instances. There's a total of, I think, maybe 200 benchmarking instances last year. There are like two or three over here that our um, software just choked on. I can't, I'm not exactly sure why. But for you know, a large majority of things, our software not only solved them, but solved them faster than, than previous state-of-the-art things. So uh, to summarize, we looked at substochastic Monte Carlo as an example of diffusion Monte Carlo. And three possible goals you might have for this are maybe this could be a useful numerical tool for understanding adiabatic quantum computation. And while well, we haven't really pursued that yet, but that might be something for the future, um, could this uh, type of algorithm any, be used to prove that adiabatic quantum computation with stochastic Hamiltonians is actually contained in P, that it's incapable of exponential speed up well, apparently not due to these L1 normalization versus L2 normalization barriers that we observed. I should mention that I think this L1 versus L2 is, is sort of a known-ish thing, in, at least at the folklore level. I'm not sure that it's a completely new idea, but we actually explicitly prove this. Um, and is it a fast classical algorithm for combinatorial optimization? That's the third goal we could uh, put on there. I think it was actually Eddie Farhi's suggestion that we try this, and that was a very good suggestion because it turned out that, yes, it's, it was uh, surprisingly good. And before concluding, I should mention one last thing, um, that these barriers really apply to anything where you're trying to track um, something that's proportional to psi, a probability distribution that's proportional to psi rather than psi squared. So that includes pretty much most variants of diffusion Monte Carlo, and also um, it includes uh, some forms of path integral Monte Carlo with open boundary conditions. So we don't know uh, where stochastic computation lies between uh, P and BQP, but maybe this is another piece of uh, evidence that it's really something intermediate and it's not just equal to classical computing asymptotically. So uh, that's all and thank you for your attention. <clears throat>
they reproduce, and the ones that there's a little bit of food, they die off. It's that style of algorithm. But we tried another one, which was uh, um, when a walker dies, it just instantly teleports to the location of a random, uniformly randomly selected other walker. Um, that you can also prove converges to the right thing, but uh, just in practice, it didn't converge quite as well for these optimization problems, it seemed like. OK. So, um... I don't believe that uh, there is this equivalence between the diffusion Monte Carlo and patin integral state. There should be a different pseudodynamics. So in patin integral graph state, you have a still a finite uh, number of replica that can tunnel, be, even if there is no other uh, things in the other well. Instead, in diffusion, you need something to be already in the other well, no? In order to... Yeah, so uh, perhaps so I misspoke a little. I don't mean to suggest that... Uh, um, open boundary condition path integral Monte Carlo is equivalent to uh, diffusion Monte Carlo. They share some shared features, but I mean, basically the status right now is we don't have, as far as I'm aware, any really plausible candidate of a single classical algorithm that could have provable polynomial convergence for simulating all uh, stochastic adiabatic processes. The path integral ones can be thwarted by these topological barriers, and the diffusion style ones can be thwarted by these L1 versus L2 barriers. So that's, that's all I really mean to say. <clears throat>